Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Connor, and today I'm going to be doing a book review on The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente. If you guys don't know, this follows a girl named September, and at the beginning of the book, she has just turned 12, and so this being called the Green Wind offers to take her to Fairyland because she's always wanted adventure and that sort of thing, and so she rides on the back of a leopard and flies to Fairyland. Once she gets there, she finds out that a lot of the things in Fairyland have gone awry, and there's all these rules, and there's an oppressive Marquise who is controlling everyone and not allowing the fairy tale creatures to be themselves. Fairies are pretty much not around anymore, and there's other people and other things that are being enslaved. And so September decides to take on that mission and help Fairyland get back to its natural state. So as usual, I'm going to go through my pros, cons, give you my rating, and be done. Pros. The first pro of this book is that the writing is absolutely incredible. The writing is so good, so high quality. I absolutely loved it. I don't think I've read a middle grade book with such high quality of writing in such a long time. It was fantastic to read this. I really liked how humorous this book is. It is, kind of takes a satirical viewpoint on fairy tales, and so the author makes these generalizations about how certain fairy tale creatures are supposed to be one way, or characters in these stories are supposed to be able to do this or do that, and I like that she addresses those things and then either uses them to her advantage or dispels them and makes September go a different direction. I really love September as the main character. I really liked her attitude towards the things that were happening around her and the way that she really wanted adventure and she was willing to let everything go to take advantage of that opportunity and then as the story progresses she begins to mature a lot more and so I really liked learning about September, her background, and seeing how she was going through this world and going through her adventures. As usual with fantasy books, I really liked the fantasy elements that Valente included in this book. I liked having the wyverns. I don't know if I'm saying that word correctly, but I think that's how you say it. It's either wyverns or wyverns. I'm not sure. But I really like that they used wyverns instead of dragons. And I like that there's a bunch of different types of one type of fairy tale creature. So there's witches, but then there's also like soothsayers and seers and sorcerers and just every type of magical being and they each have their own definition for what they can do and what they're allowed to do and then they also have different types of genies and stuff like that they have water genies and then they have Jen as well so I really liked that she included all of these different types of forms of one specific type of fairy tale creature and they each were their own separate entities I also thought it was cool that she included myths and fairy tales that we know and they have some significance in that world. For instance, they use the myth of Persephone and Hades at some point and so I really liked seeing those little, those little tidbits that Valente dropped in for people that already know those stories. I also like that September is not white. She's actually described as having brown skin and dark curly hair and so I really like that this middle grade series has a person of color for their main character. And the last thing that I really liked about this book is going to be the ending. I was on the fence about this book until the very ending and it was so incredible. I see where the story is going now and I really like the direction that it's heading and so I'm definitely excited to continue this series and see where September ends up in her next adventure in Fairyland. Now on to some of my cons. While the writing is absolutely beautiful and fantastic to read, I think that it really was hard for me to get into at first. It's so formal and almost like a classical children's book, which I always have a hard time getting into, similar to Peter Pan. And at some points I thought the writing was over the top and overly flowery and overly descriptive when we could have been moving on with the story. And so I, I liked the writing, but it was also hard for me to get into. Also, I don't know why, but every time I tried to read this book, I've tried to read it three times and this time I finally got through it, I would fall asleep in the middle of it, it wasn't boring. I would just fall asleep. I think it's because of the writing style and the pacing of the book. But yeah, once I got through the first, I don't know, 70 pages or so, I didn't fall asleep again. But the first 70 pages, I fell asleep at least three times trying to read it. And because I kept falling asleep and because the, the beginning of the book is pretty slow, I kept putting it down and not feeling the need to pick it back up and continue with the story. And so I think that that was a big con for me because I usually go through middle grade books fairly quickly and it took me a couple of days to finish this one. It's only 200 and something pages. So I would have finished this in one day had I been motivated to continue reading and continue reading and continue reading. However, at the end, I was just flying through it because it was so interesting at the very end. I think it was the last four chapters or so were 
but were A+, plus, definitely hooked me. Also, I didn't really care about the characters that much, especially the side characters. If bad things happened to them, I really did not care at all, so... I wanted to care about the characters a little bit more, but bad things seem to happen fairly often, and so I just was disconnected from the characters and let all the bad things happen to them, and I wasn't really affected at all. And lastly, I think this is also to do with the writing. <laughs> the writing was a big con and also a big pro for me, but with the writing, the words that she uses are very, I don't know, advanced, and so I think that a lot of middle grade readers, like actual middle grade readers, the people that are supposed to be reading middle grade, and that are the aim for middle grade authors wouldn't understand what a lot of the things that this book is saying. So I think that someone that was 12 or 13 that was reading this book would have to have a dictionary to read this book properly and know what all the words meant. So I think that if you have a really smart middle grade reader and they know all these words, then they're going to be having a great time. But if you have just a regular middle grade reader, I think they're going to struggle a little bit with some of the words that she chose to include in this book. So overall, I ended up giving this book four stars. I, for the first three quarters or so of the book, I was leaning towards three, three and a half stars, but then the ending really, really brought it up for me, and now I'm really excited to continue with the series, as I've said before. But because it was a really hard book for me to get into, and for me to get behind the characters, I ended up giving it four stars. I really liked it, I recommend it, but I think going in that you need to know that it's going to be a little bit harder to get into compared to a lot of middle grade books. So that's going to be my review on The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland and the Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.